Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our match preview. Republic of Ireland, Denmark, the big one, the Euro 2020 qualifier. This one, the winner of this goes to the Euros in the summer. This is massive. This is the biggest game since the the playoff we played against them. Obviously, we know the what way that went. We're not going to we're not going to go into that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but flat playoff. But let's look at look. We've played them a good few times since. I think it's three times we played them. This will probably be the fourth. If I'm wrong, tell me now. No, but well, this will be the, the the fifth, isn't it? Fifth, is it? So we've had we had the two draws in the Nations League, and we had the draw in the playoff, and then that one we won't mention. Yeah, so, but since then, so and, and, and be the, the draw, third. and the, this and the draw in the in, in Copenhagen, you know. Yeah, but since that playoff, I mean, oh, sorry, since the playoff, this will be the third sorry. time. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we get all yeah. mixed up. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, okay. So that's basically what I'm saying is that we've played them since and we would have played them uh, twice in the Nations League and then we would have played them with the Duffy 1-0 yeah. and now this will be the fourth. Yeah. So that's what, that's where we are. Um, but in that space of time, the players wouldn't... They, before that, they wouldn't have known who you know, who was good for them or they wouldn't have came across them. Now they've played them that much that they know who's good for them and who's not and they, and they would have learned from... Obviously, the game in Copenhagen, you know? Yeah, no, I think, I mean, we've played five times. Four of them have been draws, and they've been very tight games. Mm. And I actually don't read too much into the game, the game of the playoff in Dublin, because we were chasing the game, and right, it got away from us and made some terrible decisions, but it, it was a one-off, I mean... The first leg in Copenhagen was nil nil. It was a very tight, very close game. The two the two games in the Nations League, nil nil draws, very tight, close games. The one in Copenhagen, it was looking like another nil nil draw, and they scored, and we came back really well, got a great equaliser, and could have won. The people forget we yeah. could have won that game. We were the only team that looked like winning it after we equalised. Yeah, that's when Alan George came on. Yeah, he did. He, and unfortunately, he broke his wrist because he was brilliant yeah. when he came on and uh, probably set him back a bit, you know. Yeah, he looked like he was wearing a cast or something on his wrist last night in the match. But um, well, that's what I mean is that, like, uh, the thing about these Danes is that they like to talk ill about us all the time. Whereas we're not really that bothered about them. Like, obviously, we talk about the 5 1 or whatever, it's not a nice memory. But. We don't, we don't go on about, like, the Danes, okay, they play football, but they don't make us go, oh, wow, like, they don't, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not they're, they think that they're, you know, elite level team, like, no, like I, France or Spain, that's what their fans think, whatever fans comment on this channel, slate in Ireland, and say how good Denmark are, and how, how shit we are in comparison, um, watch, I bet you the Phils okay. will comment on this video as well, <laughs> let them, um, but, what I'm trying to say is, is that, they all come out and say horrible things about the nas our national team, the uh, Schmeichel and that. I think that recipe for the lads to use that as base to take it to them. because, And as well as that, I do think that the fans need to play a huge role in this game. If we make it as intimidating, as horrible as possible, yeah. um, which we, we, we used it, to it do. It used to be. I mean, I'm, I know I'm a good bit older than you, Paul. I go back to the old lands down road. And no, but I was there. I've yeah, been there with dad all the time. Yeah, you know? I mean, it was... Uh, it was a horrible well, place hang on, to I don't, play. I don't play for okay. I don't pay for games according okay. to some fans. But yeah. <laughs> it was a horrible it was a horrible place to play, and visiting teams certainly didn't like it. And then the pitch wasn't the best either. But the atmosphere and the noise, and I mean, we have got that a bit in the even. It happens sometimes, and it has to happen on Monday night as well. And yeah, I, I, I don't think Denmark are any great shakes. I think Switzerland, despite last month's result in Copenhagen, Switzerland are the best team in the group. And uh, Denmark, look, they're not a bad side in some ways, but they are not world beaters. They are not contenders to, to even get to quarterfinals, semifinals, I reckon, next summer. Hopefully they'll be in the playoffs and they mightn't even qualify, but that's another story. But they're probably just another version of us with Christian Eriksen. No, I think he is a class player. I think he's better than anybody we have. But otherwise, I okay, they've got some good players, don't get me wrong. I mean, the guy Thomas Delaney, and he must have some Irish blood in him somewhere. Uh, he's a good player, but he, and he's out of the Borussia Dortmund team at the moment. Otherwise, they're... And Paulson's good. 
yeah, a Leipzig. Yeah, Paulson's okay. He's he's a good striker. Yeah, maybe a bit better than. But I would fancy our defence ahead of theirs, and uh, uh, I think Darren Randolph is every bit as good as Casper Schmeichel. Maybe playing at a slightly different level. Um, as for Peter Schmeichel's comments, they they've got to go on the dressing room wall. I think. I'm delighted he said that. Yeah. So I'm not insulted at all. I'm delighted because Mick is going to use it. You know? I think Schmeichel's an idiot anyway. Whatever about being a good footballer or whatever, he's yeah. a fool of a pundit. He just annoys me. Um, the way he kind of goes on, he just always thinks he's right. And he just kind of goes around with this kind of attitude as if, say, I'm better than you. And I'll say, he goes on about how loyal he is to Manchester United. You play for Man City. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah. Um, but look, enough about the, the Schmeichels anyway. I'm sick of hearing about them. From our point of view, um, I think that Mick will set up quite, you know, uh, cautious. I, he, he, I don't think he'll start playing, if we do start playing, till at least 60th minute. Well, I've said it before, our, our best and our strength is our defence. OK, we've got a very good keeper. Our back five, you mean our back four and Darren Randolph and uh, then Glenn Whelan. Okay, we'll go on to that. Sitting in front of the back four, we'll go on. Like I have a problem with Glenn. No, no, I know we've gone. But I mean, I suppose my point is we have a very, very good, solid back six, and and I wouldn't be concerned at all if Josh Cullen had to slot in there. But we have a very good, solid back six. I think that's what Mick is going to go with. I mean, the thing I would keep stressing is don't concede, don't concede, don't concede because. Mm. If we go a goal down, we got to chase the game. It's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. So, I, I, if you offered me nil nil now after seventy five minutes, I'd take it. And then, just the last fifteen minutes, you throw the kitchen sink at them. You have the crowd screaming their heads, screaming their heads off. Maybe put a bit of pressure on the referee. Um, lots of balls going going into the box. Again, I go back to delivery and set pieces. I think set pieces are absolutely crucial for us. I think we got is it one goal from open play in this campaign so far? Is that the one from uh, Hendrick? So yeah, so um, it's uh, yeah, so it's free kicks, corners, um, and Shane Duffy. Yeah, but not just Shane Duffy. I mean John, John Egan, Egan hit as the post, well. Yeah. John Egan's a threat as well, and he hit the post against George. David McGoldrick as well. So yeah. Um, but I think it's 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 great to have Didzy back for this one and Darren Randolph. Yeah, just the little twins the two of them. Uh, but I think it's it's crucial. I think it showed how much we missed David McGoldrick in the last um, the last two games that we had. Uh, he brings so much more to the play, like the fact that he's able to take the ball in, but he's also able to do something. At the same time, he brings others into the game yeah. a lot more than. But yeah. the thing about it is, when you see with Collins, is he wasn't able to make it stick up there, and the difference was McGoldrick was. Yeah. Um, now McGoldrick doesn't strike me as a real physical type of guy, but he is a physical type. Yeah. He is a physical player. He doesn't look it, but he, he, as you can see, Collins looks like he can, you know, to take down a brick wall if he ran into it. But McGoldrick doesn't. McGoldrick yeah, he, he look, doesn't look it, but he is. Yeah, yeah he's very he's strong, solid, you know? solid yeah. uh, player, you know, and. Uh, I think Mick's faith in him has, has, has shown and he's rewarded that faith back. You know, he was unlucky not to score against Gibraltar, came in off the post and was given an OG. Then he obviously got his goal against Switzerland, um, which he would deserve because he was plugging away, plugging away, plugging away. But I do think as well, um, the fact that Darren's back is a, is a huge calm and influence. He, he's experienced in these type of games. You know, um, he's a cool head at the back, and I always go back to that because okay. you think of Travers and you think of O'Hara, they are quite young, and to throw them into a game like that would have been maybe a. a, a it would have been, it's a big ass. It could make or break a, a career yeah. type of game, you know what I mean? So, um, and Westwood doesn't seem to be that interested. So the fact that those two lads are, you know, chomping at the bit every time they can, they're, they're there to represent, which I love. Um, but just the step up might have been too far. So the fact that Darren's back is brilliant. And Didzy. So I think they're two very, very key players for this game in particular. I do want to go back to the Denmark game that they played against Switzerland. Switzerland, if any other goalkeeper was in goal that night, Switzerland would have won 5-1 five, five maybe. Yeah, I think Schmeichel was, just, made was just one of those nights. And, and, and he is, look... He is a fine keeper. Mm. And but, Leicester are third in the Premier League at the moment. But if second, Dar second in the Premier League, sorry. Yeah, but if yeah. Darren Randolph can make seven world-class saves on a night and we nick one, are we going to complain? 
So. That's what I'm saying. These are the I, fine margins. We need to make sure that we take the chance that we get. And we will get chances. We just need to make sure. And I don't... You know, Shane Duffy is probably the only... I think he's the only person to score against him in the in the recent games. Uh, the one... And the Aviva, yeah, and then and, the and one the away. One in, in away yeah. He'll have a, a psychological thing where he think that he can he can get on they, the end. They probably will be watching him closely, so maybe the John Egan is a good shout as well. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah, or or Dizzy, or Dizzy, uh, yeah. well, there's not really yet, nobody really else. But um, overall, see, there's not that because we've played him so much. There's not so much new stuff to talk about with him. There's other teams you can kind of yeah. go through that players. Well, I think it's it's don't concede. I think that's mm. it's going to be a very tight game. I mean, I know they drew three all with Switzerland back at the start of the campaign. That's just not going to happen. I yeah. think it's going to be... I think it'll be tight. It'll be very tight. I mean, they only need a draw, and I don't know what that does to the mindset. So will they come? Will they be happy with nil-nil? Will they, will they get very nervous if it's nil-nil with 10 or 15 minutes to go? You kind of hope with the crowd and all the, the pressure and hopefully with a lot of balls ra- raining into yeah. their box at that point. Well, I do think we have a solid back four this time. I do, people do forget the time. You know, I know Seamus Colm was missed for this game, but he was really crucial to the way we played when we, that playoff came around um, I think maybe if he had been playing there we would have done a bit better I'm not saying that one player makes that big of a difference yeah, but, I, and, uh, but I think Christy he wasn't that he didn't, good he didn't have a good game that night yeah. the other thing people forget is James McLean hit the post at 1-0 had that gone in 2-0 yeah. up who knows I mean but, uh, but even just going back to again how crucial this is because I think it's been it's been an awful year for Irish football off the pitch and all the negative stuff in the press and it's probably been a bit of a, a low key build up. I mean, we have the finals of the Euros here next June, and if we can win Monday night, we're in those finals. We have at least two, if not three, possibly three. If we win Monday night, we've got a fifty fifty chance of having three games in Dublin. And look at how it's going to do for Irish football. Look what it's going to do for the country and the boost the whole economy. Just the whole feel good factor, and we live six months, seven months, whatever to look forward to. It's but such it's, it's, a massive game, you know. It, I think it's even bigger than the playoff two year two years ago because that playoff right was going to a World Cup, but it was a World Cup in far off Russia, which is quite a. This is the Euros on our doorstep, and it's fantastic. It's a once in a lifetime chance to get to host a major tournament, yeah. and God, we have to be there. It's just so important and. But I think as well, that Gary, is that you know, people forget, we do have a young, exciting team coming in there. Like, you look at the last two sets of international games, and if you include this one, Aaron Connolly's been brought up, uh, Troy Parrott's been call- brought up, Leo O'Connor. If they go back to their club now, and I know Connolly's playing regularly for Brighton, but if the likes of Parrott gets in now, and Co- O'Connor gets in at Celtic and starts playing, the likelihood of these players will have a chance of maybe making it to the Euros. If we get that far, I might well, be looking too far ahead. I, no, and it, well, even, and God God forbid, if we don't win Monday, they, I think some of these players we saw on Thursday night could be an option for the playoffs. Yeah. Because... Uh, I don't want to even talk about the playoffs. We're going to win Monday night, but Love there's it. there's four there's four months of football to be played, club football, and if Troy Parrott's in the Tottenham side, and Leo Connor's in the Celtic side, etc., they they have to. Josh Cullen mm. will certainly be. Jason Malumbi yeah. could make a step up at that Jason point. Jason Malumbi's well. playing really well with Millwall, and he's yeah. he's doing well. So with there's, the there's players there you know, that so, you know yeah. that can do stuff. You know, maybe Darrow Shea may might start at a. Might start getting games with West Brom. I know he got sent off the under twenty ones, but uh, he might be someone that Mick might look at. But we we are fairly good at centre back, and I wouldn't be replacing uh, Egan or or Duffy at centre back. Maybe I've given away our, okay. our central <laughs> defensive officers for the start eleven show. But you know what I mean. Um, I just think that they are our two best and most solid. Um, if you're going for a preview or prediction, oh, I've been thinking about this so much. Um, the head says 1-0 Denmark, but the heart says 1-0 to us. I'm going to go with my heart. I think I just think the Euros is just so important. I just keep emphasising, repeating myself. But it's 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 going to hurt so much if it comes around next June and we're not there and we've just got to do it on Monday night and we got to qualify. Yeah. I'm going to go for 1-0. John Egan. From a corner? Or a free from kick? a free kick. From a corner over and free kick. Okay. Um, I, I'd probably go 1-0 myself. I think Duffy. I just think uh, the main man. So I think Duffy. I think because um, he has that psychological thing, 
you know, he scored against them recently. Um, they seem to be terrified of him as well. If you look at the last game we played, they, they, from set pieces, they couldn't get near him. He was just yeah. bullying them all, you know. Um, I think he needs to have a performance like the game against Wales as well, we might add. Um, Wales away, you know. Um, but uh, that's, that, that's it really then. Um, one yep. nil, fingers crossed. Roll on Monday, come on Ireland. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, do you think we could beat Denmark? This is, game is massive and if you, ha if you haven't got a ticket, make sure you get one. And uh, if you're not going to the game, please give your ticket to someone. You might as well fill the seats and uh, we'll get behind the team. Thanks very much for watching. We'll speak to you soon. Come on, you boys in green.